By what name are you known? There are some who call me... Tim? Welcome to another episode of Timmy Talks, the channel where we talk old school magic. And today we are playing an Atlantic old school magic match. So we're playing according to that rule set. That means we've got Fallen Empires, we've got Mana Burn. It's all happening right here, right now in this match. I'm playing against Taylor, a.k.a. Jin of the Lang, and he's also got a stunning altar page. I just want to mention that before I kind of dive into all the decks and stuff. So here you see a screenshot of his altars page. So he's also an artist. He makes beautiful stuff. Give him a follow if you're on Insta. He would definitely appreciate that. Now he is playing today with a deck that I've called Discard Disco because, you know, it wants to discard stuff and it's got Nevenerals discs in it. And I mean, you want to stick around for the deck photo. I'm not going to say anything right now, but it's, um, yeah, it's 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 pretty cool. It's pretty, I'm, I'm a little bit jealous of his deck, actually. Um, anyway, uh, I am also playing a deck that I think maybe he's a little bit jealous about. It's a new deck that I've designed. It's called uh, Larry Nevin's Deep Dive. And yeah, it's just super fun. It's it's mono blue. And I'm also playing with Nevin Earl's Discs. So both of us are playing with that Disc of Destruction today. So that's going to be a lot of mayhem. Now, before I continue to the deck decks, I would just like to point out that if you want to skip that section or if you just want to skip the whole intro, the best thing to do is check the description below because there you will find several timestamps. One of those timestamps reads MTG Games. If you click on there, that will take you straight to the action. And also in the description below, you can find more information about the Atlantic Old School rule set. Okay, um, for now, we are going to start with the uh, deck text. I'm actually going to start with discussing my deck, Larry Nevin's Deep Dive. And here we see the deck that I'm playing with today, Larry Nevin's Deep Dive. And I just got to say, I just love pronouncing it. I love looking at this deck picture. I'm just really happy with this deck I made. Um, maybe before I go into the deck tech, it is good to know that I've built this with a couple of restraints. So of course, it's Atlantic rule set. So I was allowed to add Fallen Empires. Um, but also I followed the X points rule system. So I couldn't spend more than 10 points on specific cards. That is why, for example, you don't see Maze of If in here. That's why you don't see um, Ancestral Recall in here. That's why you don't see Brain Geyser in here. So it's it's quite difficult to brew with, with that limitation. Um, but it, it was definitely a fun exper uh, experience. My opponent, uh, Taylor, did not have this limitation. I didn't tell him. I just wanted to play a game of Atlantic. And I just kind of decided for myself that I wanted to make an X-Point deck. So I thought, let's combine those two things together, playing against Taylor and make an X-Points deck. So that's basically what I did. Um, and this deck is is more than just a deck. It's also a whole story because it's about Larry uh, Niven. Maybe maybe you know him, maybe you, you don't. But Larry is a, a famous fiction writer. He's an author of fantasy books. And he's actually the first person that used the, ter the term mana uh, in his books. So uh, the founders of Magic the Gathering, obviously they were avid readers of his work and they found out that term and now they used it in Magic the Gathering. And I think they also gave Nevenerals Disc, which is of course an acronym for Larry Nevin, um, to, to kind of honor him and honor his work. So that's why they kind of gave him that card. And it's a super strong card. And of course, um, Nevenerl is also a, a necromancer, I believe, in the lore of Magic the Gathering. So there's just a lot happening there. And the story of this deck is that, you know, Larry is in his ivory tower, you know, doing research for his new book. And then he finds out that there's actually a lot of treasure hidden somewhere in the ocean on the ocean floor. And he wants to go on a diving expedition to try to find it. And when he dives for it, so when he does his deep dive, he is uh, confronted with these huge lobsters. So those are the deep spawns. So hence the name Deep Dive. And uh, he's got to kind of pass the lobsters and find the treasure on the bottom of the ocean. And there he finds a magical sword, Sword of the Ages. And he can use that to beat the huge lobsters. And um, that's actually what you want to do in this deck as well. Because the strategy of this deck is, okay, you know, you want to cast your deep spawns, right? But they're eight mana. So that's a lot. So what are you going to do? before you can cast them, well, you're going to try to control the board because, hey, you know, it's blue, so let's try to do that. And you're going to do that by casting Nevenerals Discs, blowing everything up, by using your Jam Day Tomes to get some card advantage, by using your Icy Manipulators to tap everything down, right? So you're, you're just trying to control the board. And you're probably thinking, right, wait a minute, if you're using Nevenerals Disc, you're going to blow up your own artifacts. Isn't that kind of stupid? Well, it would be if not for Discard, 
Hercules Recall. So Hercules Recall is one blue and one. And what it does is target um, player has to take back all the artifacts that he or she controls into their hand, right? So I can play it on my opponent, but I can also play it on myself. And, I, and, I, and the cool thing is with Hercules Recall, you can stack it in a way that you activate Nevenero's Disc, and in response to the activation, you cast your Hercules Recall. So that means while the Nevenero's Disc trigger is still on the stack, you get all your artifacts back, including Nevenero's Disc itself, and then the disc pops and destroys everything, right? So that is just a really, really good deal. For me, that is, not for my opponent, of course. But that's kind of what I'm hoping to go for. So the first part of the match will be trying to blow everything up, trying to stay alive. And then when I have enough mana, I'm going to cast Sword of the Ages. Now, Sword of the Ages is six to cast. So it's really, really steep. It's an artifact from Legends. Comes into play tap, just like the disc. When, you can, uh, when it untaps, you can choose to tap and then sacrifice it. And then you can sacrifice an X amount of creatures. And then you can deal damage to your opponents equal to the total power of all those creatures combined. So what I can do is I can try to get some damage in with my deep spawns. And then as soon as he's low enough, like on, I don't know, 12 or something or 14, I can use my sword, sack a couple of deep spawns and kill my opponent. Um, sword of the Ages is also really cool in combination with Control Magic, right? I can steal the creature from my opponent and then kind of use that against him with Sword of the Ages, deal even more damage, uh, for example, in response to a, a disenchant on my Control Magic. So I think, I think that could be really cool. The biggest problem with this deck is I'm trying to do something clunky, so I'm hoping to get some time from my opponent, Taylor. Talking about that, let's take a look at his deck, Discard Disco. And here we see the deck of my opponent. So I've called it Discard Disco. And before I go into what the deck wants to do, just have a look. Do you notice anything? I'm sure you do. Look at Rook Egg. Look at City of Brass. Sorry, City in a Bottle. There are also City of Brasses in here, but I think those are Chronicles. But look at look at City, City in a Bottle there. Look at Mishra's Factory. What he's done, what Taylor has done, which I think is just a little bit of insane, but also pretty cool. Um, he wanted this whole deck to be wide bordered. He said, you know, I just want to have this deck. It's always complete. I, I don't want to splash in uh, blue power. I just, you know, I feel this is a red-black mage deck. This is what a red-black mage would do. Um, you know, so I've just built this deck and I wanted everything to be wide bordered. So he wide bordered the Rook Egg, he wide bordered the City in a Bottle and the Mishra's Factories, I think, and the Mazes of If, by the way. Maybe I'm missing one or two cards here. Uh, let me know in the comments below if I do, Taylor. Um, but yeah, it's just, it's just great. You know, I think, I think when I'm looking at it, the aesthetic, I really love this deck. When I'm looking at what the deck wants to do, I'm really not liking it. I'm getting kind of nervous because I think this deck is really good against my deck because I've got this slow control deck and what you basically want to do is you've got so much discard so you're happy to play against an opponent who usually keeps card on hand for the first part of the game right that's that I'm, I'm playing right up your alley then also my strategy to survive is playing Nevenerals disc but you're also playing Nevenerals disc so if I use Nevenerals disc against you you're going to be like hey man I've got a set troll here and a rook egg I really don't mind if you pop the disc I'll regenerate my set troll and I get a 4-4 bird token in return, you know, for my Rook Egg. So I'm absolutely fine with that. So, I mean, this is just a really strong deck. And what I like here is that combination of Discard and Nevenerals Disc. Because, because of the Disc, I don't want to commit too much onto the board, right? Because I know he plays with Discs. And then he'll just blow up all my permanents. But I also don't want to keep a lot of cards in hand because he's playing with four Hymn to Turex and a Mind Twist. Yuck, right? So... That is like really difficult for me. What I like about this deck, by the way, another thing I like is the fact that he's not playing with Hypnotic Specters. It's quite easy when you play this to think, okay, I'm playing Discard, so I'm also going to play a Hippie. Um, but I think it's just refreshing to see that, you know, he's made a different decision here and he's thought, you know, I'm going to do something else. The interesting thing is that you then get four free slots that you can fill in differently and you can kind of find out, you know, what other avenues can I make and, um, you know, what happens if I don't play this creature? And I, I think he gets some value in return. He plays two Sengir Vampires here. I guess that's his stop end. He wants to play that after popping the discs. Yeah, I, th I, th I think that's a, that's a pretty good strategy. Very cool deck. Um, so thank you for bringing this to the table. Um, I love the, all the wide-bordered stuff. I'm a big fan of wide-bordered cards too. 
And I guess now we're ready uh, to go to the match. I am a little bit nervous because your deck seems really, really good. But okay, let's do this. Let's go to the match. Game number one, here we go. So I'm sitting on the right, starting here with a basic island and passing turn. There's my opponent with Discard Disco, starting with the City of Brass. I'm playing my second island, so counter magic's up right now. Remember, I'm playing four counter spells and a mana drain. So this could be the reason that Taylor is not casting anything yet. He does have the mana now to potentially cast him to Turek, which would be a great card actually to lure out my counter spells. There is another island and some ramp with the Mock Sapphire. There is a Swamp from Taylor, so he could play a Setch Troll now. That's one of the options. Looks like he's going to play something, taking a damage from the city. There is a Setch Troll. Are we going to see? Yeah, we're going to see a Counter Spell. He's countering the Setch. Of course, it's very important for my deck to early on kind of counter or tap down or stop all the threats. Setch Troll, a difficult um, creature for me to deal with because I'm playing with that Nevenerals Disc strategy. There we see him to Turek here. So that is kind of nasty. And I was afraid of this already. Perhaps Taylor decided to first play out the Setch to lure out that counter spell. Ooh, look at that, losing a Time Walk and a Deep Spawn. But especially that Time Walk is really painful. Because with that Time Walk, I could take an extra turn, play out an extra land, you know, and get closer to that 8 mana that I need for my Deep Spawn. I already have 7 mana, by the way, but now I've lost that Deep Spawn as well. So this was a really good hint to Turek. There is a Rook Egg. Really good him to Turek here for Taylor. I'm finding another island, tapping four, playing a Nevenerals Disc. Not very useful at the moment because if I pop the disc, and look at that, I'm actually taking it back. <laughs> Takesy Bexy here from my side. Thank you, Taylor, for uh, allowing me to do that. We had a really nice uh, chat as well, by the way, besides this match. Just uh, had a good time. And there he plays the Chain Lightning on his Rook Egg. So he's going to get a 4 4 Bird token. And he told me here that he's just going to pretend as if he hasn't seen the uh, Nevenerals disc. So I really appreciate that. And he's attacking me for, uh, for two as well with the Mishra's Factory. And of course he gets that 4-4 bird token. So now I'm playing the Nevenerals disc and passing turn. And now he's attacking here. I, l I made a little mistake, by the way, with the life totals. When he was attacking with the Factory, I took the life off of Taylor. I'm what I'm trying to do is <laughs> I'm trying to keep track of both life totals with my dice. I'm trying to get used to, to doing that uh, because that way I ensure that it's easier for you guys to follow the life totals, but I'm not really used to it yet. So anyway, I've now rectified the life totals. I'm on 12, so I'm in trouble here and uh, Taylor is on 18. And of course, I'm not gonna pop him first, gonna wait, give him his turn. Now I'm gonna pop the disc and at least I'm uh, destroying that bird token, but it's not a great situation for me because I'm losing two permanents and my opponent is only losing one. And okay, there's a Demonic Tutor. Is he going to be mean and look up a Mind Twist? Maybe he's not because I still have three cards in hand, so, you know, he could run into a counter spell. But I'm really afraid of a Mind Twist here. I don't have a counter spell in hand if I uh, remember it correctly. Tapping four. Okay, there is at least an Icy Manipulator and copying the Icy Manipulator. Okay, this is kind of good. The next turn I can start tapping stuff down. Hopefully Taylor doesn't have a Shatter or something. Even if he does, I still get to keep one of my Icy. So this is the game I want to play, right? Try to stretch the game out as long as possible so I can do my silly stuff. That is kind of the goal of my deck here. Tapping the Badlands here. What is he going to do? Tapping two more swamps, tapping more stuff. Are we going to see? There it is, the Sengir Vampire 4-4 Flyer. Luckily, I have those two Icy Manipulators, so I can tap down the Factory and the Sengir if he wants to attack with them. Tapping two, three, four. Again, I've got a lot of forecasting cost artifacts in my deck. There we see a Jam Day Tome. This is actually really good, because what I can start doing now is tap down the Threats, Draw cards with the Gem Day Tome. That's basically what I want to do. Ooh, playing a Felwer Stone. So I'm opening myself up to more damage here. I can only tap the Sengir, so I'm choosing to play the Felwer Stone for some extra ramp, but that's going to, you know, basically cost me uh, two points to life here. There's the him to Turek. Oh, losing a deep spawn. Man, him is no fun, man. Oh, 
I so wanted to cast a deep spawn anyway. Oh, okay, he's gonna do a chain on my life total. Gonna go to nine. Anyway, sorry, Taylor. I mean, I know him is a huge part of your, your strategy, so it's it's all good. And uh, he's cutting me some slack here, I guess. He's Or he's forgetting to simply attack with the factory, I'm not sure. Because uh, that factory attack would have would have put me on seven. So I'm a little bit lucky finding another mana. No cards in hand anymore, but I do have that gem day tome. Already two of my deep spawns in the bin, of course. But now I've got control. I can tap down the threats and I can draw a card. That's ideal. So I'm tapping down the Sengir here. And second main, there's another vampire. Gonna start digging, because now I'm gonna take some damage in if he activates his factory next turn. I'm gonna tap down his City of Brass to at least deal one point of damage. Finding more islands, so I've got more than enough islands and it's just really a pity that I couldn't keep those deep spawns because now I really need one. It would just be so cool to at least cast one deep spawn, but you know, I'm on nine right now. It's, it's just not great. Casting a Navanerals Disc. I mean, it, it can save me a little bit. Problem is, I'm also going to blow up my own Ices. I really need a Hercules Recall right now with the Navanerals Disc. So I'm going to tap down to two Vampires. Going to take two from the factory. Going to go to seven. And remember, I'm playing against a lot of burn. This is super dangerous. If I go to six, I'm dead, I think, to be honest. I mean, six is double bolt. He hasn't played a single bolt. He's played two chains, but not a single bolt. He also plays, I think, two fireballs and disintegrates as well in that deck. So it's very explosive. And I'm going to copy another IC manipulator. So this, this strategy is going well so far. This is what my deck wants to do. I'm not unhappy, to be honest. The problem is I'm on seven. So he's playing another City of Brass. What is he going to do here? I mean, is he, is he counting his mana right now? Because he's got enough mana to kill me. Yeah, there's a fireball. So I've got nothing in hand. I assume I'm going to draw a card, right? No, that's it. Okay, wow, that's weird. I could have drawn a card with my Jam Day Tome. Why am I not doing that? Anyway, um, what's that? Yeah, I think, did I forget? I'm sure maybe we, we talked about it. Anyway, I lost his first game. The good news is we've got a second game. And I mean, I'm hopeful. I think the first game, it went okay-ish. You know, it could have been could have been a lot worse, in my opinion. So I'm gonna, you know, shuffle up and we'll catch back up with you in game number two. Game number two, here we go. So I've done some sideboarding. Taylor's done some sideboarding. Let's get this deck working. There's an island and a pass. And there we see Taylor getting his seven. Is he gonna keep? It looks like he is. Drawing card for turn. And we're off to the races. Ooh, this is bad. Dark Ritual <laughs> into Turek. What a horrible start. What a horrible start. For me, at least. Good start for Taylor. Although it's a two for two, you know, Dark Ritual and him gone. The problem, of course, for me is I'm going to lose cards at random. I'm going to lose a Blue Elemental Blast and a Control Magic. Those are really good cards. I believe I boarded in two extra Control Magics from the sideboard. Because of those Setch Trolls. And of course some Blue Elemental Blasts. And I'm sure Taylor also boarded in some Red Elemental Blasts. Anyway, playing a Felwer Stone here in passing turn. So a little bit of ramp. Another Swamp. Hopefully not another him. That will be kind of deadly right now. I don't know. Not another him. So that's kind of nice. Four cards right now. Playing another Island. I mean, four is kind of the sweet spot for me. Because I can start casting Ices, Gem Day Tomes, Nevenerals Discs. There we see a Gem Day Tome. I am tapped out though, so I can't counter. So I'm giving a window to Taylor here to exactly Batlands and then play a Setch Troll. I hope not. Ooh, Demonic Tutor, that's also bad. What could he look up here? I probably wouldn't go for more discards since my hand's kind of empty. Maybe a Nevenerals Disc because then he can blow up um, my Mana Rock and my Gem Dayton. So it's a nice two for one. It does take a while though, because then, you know, next turn he already played the land for turn, so next turn play lands number four, then he would cast the gem, uh, the, the Navanerals disc comes into play tapped, so it's, it's a bit of a slow plan, so maybe it just took a creature, who knows. Three cards in hand now, and 
using my book in the main phase, I'm not really happy with this decision. I know why I'm doing it because I want to hit my land drop, but I think I should just keep my, my blue mana open, pretend to have a counter spell. Here we see Chaos Orb by Taylor. And he's going to flip directly, probably on the book here. So perhaps he looked up the Chaos Orb to flip on the book. Although then he might as well... Oh, it's a miss! Okay, this is sweet. I'll take all the luck that I can get here. I wanted to say probably he didn't look it up or else he would have gone for a Shatter, which is a sure bet. So he probably had it in hand already or just top decked it. Again, drawing a card to your main face, trying to find an island. This time I do find an island. And uh, there's a pass here. What is Taylor going to do? Dare we see a set troll? Don't have, don't have a blue blast apparently to counter it. And tapping four again. Four is really the sweet spot for my deck there. Finding an icy. So now at least I can tap down the set troll. So that's pretty good. Let's see what we're going to see. I'm probably just going to tap the satch. Exactly. And what's going to happen next here? Okay, there's a pass. So I've kind of got control again. This is the game I want to play, right? Counting my mana. Perhaps I've got a deep spawn in hand. I've got seven mana available. One more and I can potentially cast a deep spawn. If I should do that, that's another discussion. Tapping down the Setch. There's a Shatter on the Icy. And getting a card. Finding, trying to find a counter spell, probably. There's a Hercules Recall. This is actually pretty good. Getting all my equipment back. And of course, the Setch was already tapped by my Icy, so I'm not taking any damage. So basically, I traded a Hercules Recall for a Shatter. And I have to rebuild, but it's better than losing my Icy Manipulator here. I really need that Icy. And um, passing turn here. So choosing not to play out my Felwer Stone. Does that mean that I have a blue blast in hand? That I want to keep one blue open to tap the Satch, one blue open to potentially counter any red cards? Taking the damage, that means I've got a counter spell in hand, right? Or at least I'm pretending to have one. There we see a Satch troll, there's a counter spell. And now I'm untapping here. Okay, so I've got my lands, got six lands. Workshop, that's pretty handy. Casting my Jam Day Tome again. Five cards in hand. And I'm just going to pass here. Interesting. Could have, could have played out that, uh, that Felwer Stone again. What is Taylor going to do? And tapping down the set here. Second main, playing an Evanerals Disc. Ooh. That is a problem. Took an extra card with the Gem Day Tome, by the way. But that Navnerals Disc is a problem. Hopefully I have another Hercules Recall there in my hand. This is really a problem for me. Tapping there. He's passing turn. Drawing another card. And he's attacking. Tapping down the set Stroll. And then he's going to activate the Disc. Is he going to do that? Oh, there's Hercules Recall. Yeah, this is great. This is absolutely great. So now he loses his disc. And I still have all those artifacts. And remember, I've got the Mishra's Workshop. So it's kind of easy from, well, easier for me to recast it. You know, Icy is just going to cost me two lands. That's it. Workshop on an island. There we've got the Icy back. That Icy is so important for me. There's the Felwer Stone, finally tapping that down as well and casting a Gem Day Tome. So, I mean, this game is going very well so far. I've drawn a lot of extra cards compared to Taylor. The problem is, at a certain point, I have to start dealing some damage as well. I just really need, need my Deep Spawns. I need my Lobster Boys to, uh, to finish the job, basically, or start the job. Because, uh, I mean, he's on 19. Only one point of damage that he inflicted on himself. I'm going to drop to 17 here, by the way, with that uh, attack, I believe, with the Setch. Or I was already on 17. Anyway, let's see what I'm going to do. Tapping 6 here. Is there Sword of the Ages? Yeah, there's Sword of the Ages. Making a little mix-up there with the Deep Spawn. 
But casting is sort of the ages, so it comes into play tapped. Six mana, legend, uh, artifact from Legends. And when it untaps, you can tap it, sacrifice an X amount of creatures, and then you can deal damage to any target equal to the total power of those creatures that you've sacrificed. So if I sack, for example, two deep spawns, I can deal 12 damage. The thing is, those creatures are exiled from the game, and so is the sword itself. So let's see. Animating there, I'm tapping down. The fact, or sorry, the um, the set, but taking two damage from the factory, gonna drop to 15. Okay, finding a mox there. So I'm on 15, Taylor still on 19. Tapping a lot, are we gonna see a deep spawn? That would be so sweet, there is a deep spawn. I'm making a mistake here, by the way. I should have used my Felwer Stone to, uh, to tap so that I could have had two blue open for a potential counter spell. So there's, a, again, these little mistakes, they can make it or break it for me. I mean, the deck I'm really playing doesn't allow a lot of room for error, you know? You gotta, you gotta just really be on top of it. Taylor, of course, wants to attack here with the set. I'm probably gonna tap it down again. That's exactly what I'm going to do. Tapping down the Sedge. Now we can still attack, of course. There we see it. Do I have a Blue Blast? Oh, I can give it Shroud so I can protect it. But now it's going to stay tapped next turn. So I'm slowing myself down here. And of course, he can now attack me for two with the Factory. He's not doing it, though. So that's a little bit of luck on my side. So remember that Deep Spawn remains tapped and I'm gonna lose two cards because of the Deep Spawn. You gotta put two cards in your graveyard in your upkeep. Let's see what I can do. Tapping five more Deep Spawns. Another Deep Spawn here on the board. This is fantastic. And playing a Time Walk here. This is great. I can untap both of my Deep Spawns. There's a double bolt. Ooh, he's gonna kill one of my deep spawns. That is unfortunate. I could use the sword, of course. Deciding not to, I wanna keep the sword. Could have dealt six damage via Sword of the Ages there. Decided not to. Attacking here for six. So he's gonna drop the 13. I kind of feel that maybe the sword would have been a good move. Or do I have another deep spawn in hand? That would explain, oh, that explains it. That explains why I didn't use the sword on the other deep spawn. I already had another one in hand. And then, of course, I can deal 12 damage in one go. Taylor's on 13. I'm very close to my first victory ever with, uh, with uh, Larry Nevin's deep dive. This is exciting stuff. Let's see what Taylor can do. I'm on 15 here. Does he have something? Remember, I can give my deep spawn Shroud by uh, paying one blue. Losing four cards here, two deep spawns. Losing a lot of islands. And there's the attack, double deep spawn. And oh, why am I not? Oh man, this is a mistake. I could have used my Icy Manipulator to tap down the Maze of If. And then I probably would have won the game here. Not doing it though, so now he's blocking, double blocking one of the, the remaining deep spawn that's attacking. What am I gonna do? I can use my sword to deal six damage still. It looks like that's what I'm doing. So he's gonna drop to seven. Ooh, but this is a problem for me. Am I now not winning? Is this game slipping away? Playing a Nevenerals disc. Tapping two more for Transmute Artifact. Okay, I'm probably gonna look up Another sword, perhaps? Because if I can find another sword and deal some damage... Yeah, I'm going to look up another sword. So playing Transmute Artifact over my Nevenerals disc. Using that to look up another sword. And now I'm pointing to my Icy, probably telling him that I made a huge mistake there. Should have, of course, used the Icy Manipulator previous turn to tap down the Maze of If. There's a Shatter on the Sword of the Ages. Or is it going to be on the Icy? It's going to be on the Icy. Interesting. That is an interesting move. There's a him to Turek. Of course he can still double block next turn, countering the him to Turek here. 
I could have countered the Shatter, right? Wouldn't it, that have been a better move? I'm just seeing some strange plays from my part. Perhaps it's because I'm so close to victory that I'm kind of getting nervous or something. I don't know. Tapping lots here. Do I have another deep spawn? That would be epic. Another deep spawn. Ho oh, ho! Winning the game! Second both of my deep spawns here, dealing 12 damage. And I mean, I'm sorry I'm so excited, but it's just great to see my deck doing what it wants to do. And then if I take into account that I made some playing errors in this game as well, so I can play it even better, right? I can get more out of this deck. I've won a game, proving that it kind of works. It's 1-1. One, one. I'm happy, you know, I'm happy with that because I think Taylor's deck is pretty strong. Anyway, it's only 1-1, one, one, so we're now going to go to game number three. Let's see how this is going to end up. Game number three, here we go. So Discard Disco on the play. This is the decider here. Starting off with an island, beautiful altar by Buddy. Second swamp, no hint to Turek from Taylor. So I'm kind of feeling blessed here. Now I've got counter magic up. Are we going to see a set troll here from Taylor? That's one of his better plays to make in turn number three. And Setch Troll, a really difficult creature for me to deal with because I'm also playing with Nevenerals Discs and obviously they don't work against a troll. So let's see if Taylor can cast anything. Perhaps he's a little bit into tank here because I've got those two blue untapped and I've got a full hand. So he's wondering, what do I want to do first? Maybe he wants to play a Setch so he lures out a counterspell and after he can play a him, kind of get card advantage going. Or he wants to do it the other way around, who knows. Anyway, five cards in hand passing turn. Or is it six? Playing out another island here. And also a pass turn. So I've got seven in hand. There's a basic land by Taylor. There's a Setch Troll. Is there going to be a blue elemental blast, a counter spell, anything? No. Just playing another island, tapping four. Control magic, okay, taking over the troll. That is pretty good news for me. Of course, it's just a 2-2 on my side of the board and it doesn't have regeneration because I don't have any black mana, but you know, he doesn't have a creature anymore, a creature that I cannot kill and now I have it. And worst case scenario is he's got to spend another card on the control magic. And remember, he's playing, playing red and black. It's really difficult for that color combination to get rid of enchantments. So, okay, so now he's going to cast a Chain Lightning with a Swamp, so it should be the Badlands. <laughs> I mean, maybe it's getting late. We were playing this pretty late. Uh, anyway, losing the Sedge, playing another Island. Hopefully it's not going to be relevant, by the way, that he tapped the Swamp instead of the Badlands. Six cards in hand. And uh, it looks like I've got some options too, but I'm passing turn instead. I'm probably waiting for enough mana that I can cast something for four and keep a counter spell open. Let's see what Taylor can do. Tapping four. Oh, <laughs> mind twist. No counter spell. Oh, this is so bad. This is so bad. I mean, this mind twist could be actually what what wins in the game. I mean, I haven't lost yet, don't get me wrong, but it's just, it's brutal. Losing a Hercules Recall, a Control Magic, and a Deep Spawn. Tapping six, playing Sword of the Ages. Not great. I mean, it's so bad playing against uh, Discard, it's just really tough. Especially that combination between Nevenerals Disc and Discard Magic because you're like, I don't want to commit too much to the board because of the Nevenerals Discs, but if you keep it in hand, you know, you got to deal with the discard spells like Mind Twist and him to Turek. It's also hard. So it's kind of a catch-22. You can't really make the right decision. That's probably one of the things that makes Taylor's deck so strong. There's a him. There's a counter spell on the him though. So at least that's something going to save that one card in hand. But uh, it's looking pretty bad for me here. I have to be honest. In game number three, untapping everything. Finding an island. Tapping it. Casting a time walk. Just taking an extra turn here. Obviously, I don't want to use time walk for that. But, 
you know, I'm just trying to find something. Basically cycling my time walk away here. There is a demonic tutor. Wonder what he's going to tutor for. Maybe just a creature, maybe a Setro. He's got enough mana to cast it straight away and start just hitting me for three a turn. Let's see. Tapping three. Okay, there's the Setch. Another island. Oh, man. Attacking with the Setch, dropping to 17. Playing the Nevenerals Disc. And there's a pass. So it's looking really bad for me here. I mean, also the disc makes it even worse. And he's going to pop the disc. That kind of surprises me that he's going to trade the disc for the sword. Maybe the sword made an impression in the previous game. Oh, he's got another Nevenerals disc. Okay, I understand the play. <laughs> It's looking super bad for me. Okay, kind of just playing the icy. I mean, you know, if he uses a disc, fine. Then at least it's no damage from the troll. If he doesn't use the disc, also fine. Tapping the sedge. Playing his Sengir. Interesting. So he's going to commit a little bit more to the board instead of wiping the board clean again. Playing a copy artifact here on the icy manipulator. So this is kind of reminds me of game one, right? Where I started copying my ICs to keep everything tapped. And that actually, that was a pretty okay-ish game. I managed to kind of get control back in that one. So now he can tap down his two attackers. And, oh, there's a Rook Egg. Yeah, I think next turn he's probably going to pop the disc. Because then he gets a 4-4 bird token. He's going to do it now, actually. Yeah, of course, he can pay the one black. He's got the one black to regenerate the Sedge. He's going to lose his Sengir, though. But, I mean, look at that. I mean, this is just great news for Taylor. And okay, I found an Emerald's Disc. That's something at least. Again, it doesn't work against the Setch, but it does destroy that 4-4 Flying Bird token. First, I've got to take 7, though. Going to drop to 7. Remember, I'm playing against a lot of direct damage. Chain Lightning, going to go to 4. Oh, this is really bad. This is really bad. I need a miracle, miracle. So he's going to attack. I'm going to pop the Disc to stay alive. I've got to do it. At least the bird token goes away. The Setch Troll stays though, Taylor. There's a Disintegrate. Ooh, Counterspell on the Disintegrate. Okay, so I'm still alive. Four life. So maybe I can kind of stretch it here. Playing a Flower Stone and another Flower Stone. I don't want to have any Flower Stones right now. Attacking there. Going to go to one. Eh, Lightning Bolt. Oh, unfortunate, but I... Uh. But, I, you know, to be honest, I, I can live with that. I can live with that, you know. I mean, Taylor, you've built a great deck. It was a lot of fun to play against you. What a beautiful deck. And, um, you know, of course, I'm not a fan of playing against this card. You know, when it happens to you, it kind of hits you hard. On the other hand, I am the blue counter control player, so I can't really complain against those cards. It's all part of old school. And I have to say, man, your deck is beautiful. Um, remember what I said at the start of this video, so just in case you missed it, he is also an artist. He makes beautiful magic altars. Look him up on his Instagram page. Here you can see the address. So uh, give him a follow. I'm sure he will appreciate it. And um, talking about appreciating things, I would really appreciate it if you could give me a like or leave a comment. A lot of you do, and that really helps the channel grow. So that's just all fantastic. So please keep doing that. Keep helping me. Uh, you know, grow Timmy Talks and show how beautiful and cool old school magic is. Because some people think that, you know, it's just this boring format or whatever. No, man. There's so, there are so many possibilities with the old school magic card pool. It is fantastic. So please help me spread the word, like this video, leave a comment. And if you're new to the channel, welcome. Great that you found Timmy Talks. Please subscribe and don't forget to ring that bell. Okay, and now we see uh, uh, my deck here, by the way, my deck photo. I'm just really happy with my deck, but obviously I'm always looking for ways uh, to improve it. So if you've got any suggestions, please leave them in the comments uh, below. And as you can see, uh, there are some cards here. I played, for example, with Revised Lands in this match. And on this deck photo, you see uh, Beta Lands. But the, the deck is, yeah, pretty much the same as the deck that I played here against Taylor looking at the cards. So not the addition, but the cards are pretty much 
the same. Um, before we go, one last thing that I would like to ask you and would like to, t um, uh, to tell you about, and that is the Timmy Talks Patreon page, because Timmy Talks has its own Patreon page, and I now have over a hundred patrons. I'm super thankful for that, and they really help me keep the channel going. They're sponsors of the channel. They help me to buy new equipment, but they also help me to um, go, for example, to tournaments in Europe and all over the Netherlands, and hopefully also in the future, America or Asia, who knows. So I would like to ask you to support me as well and help me keep this channel alive and show you live streams from all over the planet, basically, where people play old school magic. So if you wanna be a part of that, if you wanna be part of Timmy Talks, please click on the info card right now and that will take you to the Timmy Talks Patreon page where you, where you will find all the ins and outs. Talking about that, let's go to the end scroll and let's take a look at the fantastic, amazing, wonderful patrons and channel members of Timmy Talks. Here we go. Thank you to Samba Kazik.